to everyone in the extended Food for the Poor family, to all the employees in all the countries. I want to thank you for helping us to serve the poor. It has been a greatly challenging year in so many ways. But as the true words have been said, we have overcome. We have walked the mountain together, but there's so much more to be done. 2010 was a very challenging year for Food for the Poor, yet we have continued all of our projects and programs in all of our countries. We have done food, of course, but we have also built a large number of housing. We have done many water wells, and we have done a lot of educational projects, not only building schools, but supplying them with materials. And uh, we have, of course, taken a big plunge into development. We have done projects like tilapia. We have done a tremendous number of uh, job training in centers that we have set up and support so that people can have the dignity and hope of being able to support themselves. We have been privileged to sow seeds of hope among the poor. These seeds are in the food given to starving children, homes built for families living in shacks and tent cities, and emergency aid delivered to the suffering. In 2010, the greatest need was definitely in the country of Haiti. For not only did they have the normal problems of poverty that have plagued its people for many generations, but on January 12th of that year, an earthquake measuring 7.0 on the Richter scale devastated the country. The capital of Port-au-Prince and the area of Leogan have 1.3 million people homeless there and in a country where so many had nothing, a new meaning of nothing has arisen. When I arrived in Haiti, there were a million people living on the streets, uh, un under sheets, they didn't even have tents yet. There were bodies in the streets. Um, although some of them had been taken away, there were still bodies in the rubble, hanging out of the rubble. Nobody knew what was going on, and people were absolutely terrified of aftershocks because they lived through such a cataclysmic disaster. Two days after the earthquake, we had uh, medical supplies brought in through the Dominican Republic into Haiti by truck. Three days afterwards, we were delivering food, and we were able to, only six days after the earthquake, serve the first 15,000 hot meals in that city. Haiti is a country that has gone through many, many traumatic experiences. There is a, a desperate cry, uh, particularly in the area of um, housing, since the earthquake. Many, many families lost their home and people were very hardworking people. And you find the very, very poor living even now in very, very fragile tents that are unsafe to protect them from the element. And we at Food for the Poor are very, very concerned. I can only imagine what an atomic bomb would do on a country. And when you look at the devastation in Port-au-Prince and in Leogan and in Miraguan and in Grand Guave and Petit Guave in that area, it's frightening. We are in the process of helping to rebuild schools and hospitals and homes. We have been involved in bringing relief in the sense of food, um, medical help, medical assistance, clean water, and the, the major aspect of providing safer homes. This is a picture of Aresto O'Claude. He's four years old, and he was trapped uh, in the rubble of his home from the earthquake for five days until his father dug him out and he had wounds to his head, his torso, and his arm later had to be amputated. And he obviously was in a lot of pain. But here you see the difference between the photo a week after the earthquake, where it was full of pain and sorrow, and then five weeks later, you see Aresto, full of joy, full of spirit and life. I think that this is representative of, of the whole nation, of what's possible. It's, it's full of inspiration and hope 
for their country and, and the hope that we have for them. While the disaster in Haiti has drawn a lot of public attention, Food for the Poor also searches for the people who have been overlooked, people who are quietly suffering, in need of a roof over their heads, in need of a good meal after days of going without, or a little help starting a micro-enterprise that could bring comfort and dignity back to their lives. Gracias a la institución se pudo y for the poor que lo que hacen posible para que estas ayudas vengan y gracias al señor porque él es el que toca los corazones. In Honduras, at the orphanage El Refugio, which literally means the refuge, young boys and girls are given a safe place to live, healthy food to eat, and taught job skills that will help them earn a living after they graduate. Lógico, aprender a trabajar es para poderse ganar la vida afuera es. Nos enseñan a cortar pelo, planchar pelo, secar, manicure y pedicure. Y me encanta porque aprendemos cada día más, cada día algo más nuevo. Lo pueden hacer con huevo. In Guatemala, where malnutrition is the highest in the Western Hemisphere, single mothers are supplied with four to five foods and other items to provide nutritious meals for their families and earn an income cooking. Tiene un, un sabor bien rico y nos gusta. Sí, tiene muchas vitaminas para, para un mejor, que tengamos una mejor salud. In the Dominican Republic, medical supplies, including this ambulance, were given to a hospital. It is all part of Food for the Poor's mission to serve the poorest of the poor. In 2010, we were able to touch more lives than ever before. There are so many people to thank. The management, the staff, the volunteers, the donors, our board of directors. There is so much suffering that without you, it would not be possible. I personally would like to thank you from the bottom of my heart for the work that we are accomplishing on a day-to-day -day basis. And I thank the staff in a tremendous way. God bless you, your families, and may you always remember that we are all servants of the poor.